late 24, early 25, is when we will get blow off with long term 10 year US treasuries. So we will have internal problems in the market. At the same time, the war intensifying. So that will lead us into, frankly, a depression, which will be similar to what was experienced in 2932. Simon Hunt, a British economist who's based in Dubai, has done business in China, Africa, Australia, Chile, England, and other big nations, which gives him a unique advantage point on the global economy. He sees something on the horizon that, if it comes true, will absolutely shatter the bull market of the past 10 years, just like 1929 shattered the roaring 20s. Of course, alongside this will be the falling apart of the economy as well. I want to go a little bit deeper into what he sees and we can judge for ourselves on how likely we think this is of actually occurring. So he's got a sequence of steps for how this is going to happen up until the implosion, which he predicts, of a depression in 2025. He thinks there's a bunch of ingredients at play here, but it all starts with a basic premise of one thing, and that is, there is a war going on. As an old wise friend said to me when we were chatting the other day, Simon, we are in World War Three. What he means when he says World War Three is that it's not just Russia and Ukraine who are at war, I don't want to get too political, but we all know that other major countries are involving themselves, each backing a particular nation, they each have their pawn in the play. But what does war have to do with the markets and the economy? Hunt says that the Fed, the key central power to the markets and the economy, will have to recheck its policies to take into account this war. Central banks will be will have to look at the consequences of war in policy making. So right now the Fed are doing what's called quantitative tightening, contracting money, taking it out of the system. Hunt thinks that soon they will switch this policy, not only because of the war, but because of what he says will be some accident that will occur in the financial markets. Whether it's banks continue to fail or a stock market crash, he thinks this will be the excuse for the Fed to pivot and go back to quantitative easing, aka pushing money into the system instead of taking it out. And that will be the excuse for the Fed to stop tightening and to go back by the end of this year back to QE. This QE will have its follow on effects too. After this short term correction in the financial markets, Hunt predicts that stocks will once again shoot up up until 2025. With the Fed's switch to QE, the excess cash will find its way into the market driving it higher. I think I heard you say that, that stocks and commodities will hit new highs during that period, Correct. probably because Correct. of all the liquidity. Correct. And, Correct. Yeah. All right. But then, so, so we get- Basically, in, in, in very broad numbers, the S&P will double in value. However, after stocks have shot up to 6,000 by around 2025, he then predicts the depression will come and wipe out not just the economy, but the stock market as a whole over the next couple years goes Correct. up to six thousand right yeah when the depression hits do you see the markets coming down oh crash because of that crash crashing. the recovery over the next two years should be used to save you during the depression so that is quite an arc on what he's predicting with the stock market First, he thinks it will go down as the economy enters into a recession. Then he thinks it shoots up to 6,000 when the Fed starts to QE, and then a drastic fall when the economy enters into the next Great Depression. If his market arc does come true, of course, the obvious answer is to buy when the market shoots up, up until 2025, and then sell when the depression comes. However, that can be a big if, if his prediction is correct. Warren Buffett's normal theory is, well, I can't predict where the market is going to go. There's too many factors at play. I normally like to invest the way Warren Buffett does. But if Hunt's prediction is right, 
obviously you'd want to buy probably high growth innovative stocks if the S&P 500 were to go up to 6,000. And then of course when the market crash comes with the depression, just make sure you're not the last one on the dance floor. Now that's called timing the market, which is a dangerous game to play, but everyone has their own strategy. Choose yours wisely. Hunter also has a prediction for the US dollar. He thinks that in the short term it will have its ups and downs, but in the long term it will progressively decline. The reason being, because every year it gets devalued through the printing of money. He said, if you look at a 1980 dollar today it is only worth 25 cents. Do investors want to continue to receive a currency that depreciates in value every year? They want value. Logically, they are going to have to leave the dollar and look for different currencies that don't devalue. He said that this rise in inflation that we've seen since 2020 is only just the start. This is the first and the smaller of two waves that we are going to see. With inflation's recent dip, he believes that there will be a new wave that is going to come that will dwarf the level of inflation of today's times. In fact, we'd have to go back 40 years if we wanted to see inflation levels as high as what he's predicting. He said, quote, by 2025, the US CPI will probably be higher than the 1980 peak of 13.5%. That's exactly what you saw in the 1970s and the early 1980s. You had the first wave, and then by the time you got into 78, 79, and 80, you got the second wave, which was the destructive wave. Of course. And as <laughs> events these days speed up, you're not going to wait for four or five years. This will result in US Treasuries blown off in mid-2024 to around 11 plus percent, which will be the key ingredient to wreak havoc in the financial markets. Alongside this, he thinks the war will continue to intensify and combined with high Treasuries hurting the market will cause the next Great Depression. Now, what follows is a collapse, as we see it, of the global financial system with asset prices falling, the sort of rates that were experienced in 1929, 1932, and therefore copper and other commodity and metal prices will collapse also. If one is taking it a stage further, what this leads to is a world of multinational currencies and a world where debt is not the driver of growth but equity. But combined with this depression prediction, he talks about the Gleisberg cycle. The Gleisberg cycle is due to hit around 2025. The last time the cycle hit in 1936, we called it the Dust Bowl decade. One of the meteorologists that I follow, who's been very accurate, showing that in 24-25, we get the 90-year Gleisberg cycle coming in. And the last time we saw that in the 1930s was when we had the Dust Bowl. So I don't know how likely this is of occurring. I'm no meteorologist or anything close to it. But the problem is, if the Gleisberg cycle is true, it normally hits the US Midwest. The US Midwest, of course, is a huge producer of agricultural products. And this plays into Hunt's prediction on food, which he says will soar in price over the next few years. And food inflation having a massive resurgence, first because of the drought in Europe, and secondly, in 2024, the US Midwest has a 90 year drought cycle. If his predictions are to come true, this is what we will see. A round two of the Great Depression in 2025, or at least something similar. Inflation higher than what it was in 1980, over 13.5%. Treasuries of 11% plus, soaring food prices, a mini stock crash followed by a bull run to 6,000 points, followed by a major crash in 2025 along with the depression. I hope his prediction is wrong. It is an extreme prediction and there's a lot of things that he's assuming here. If one of his assumptions proves to be wrong, that can potentially ruin his overall forecast.